Anyway, finally for our last topic. So, something interesting here. So, if you're a car lover, we mentioned talking about the partnership of Apple. Here's an even more interesting story. So, obviously, in a common vehicle, you see typical dashboard that you see in your car. The speedometer, you know, the temperature gauge, all of those things. Now, what would make it more interesting? Now, Mercedes-Benz recently unveiled a very interesting, massive, they call it hyperscreen. It's a 56-inch hyperscreen display. So, where it displays all the pertinent information. So, if you were to look at it, it looks tremendous. So, uh, it debuted for their EQS luxury electric sedan. So, obviously, they're trying to promote their electric vehicles here. Uh, it's all completely digital with a voice-controlled in-car user experience. So, let's... Let's take a closer look here what it looks like so let's browse closely yeah so as mentioned here the high per screen isn't a one screen but uh three pieces of several display embedded into one solid piece and a curved glass that spans the entire dash so which look tremendous so as mentioned it that consists of three screens embedded on display instrument cluster behind the steering column uh, central infotainment screen and an additional screen facing the passenger so let's see here so you can see here that's the main center console so let's move downward so you can see a bit take a better look so here's the side side look of the screen so here you can see it's a very long it, it spans the entire dashboard of the car and you can see it's it looks one piece right but it, it consists of several pieces and let's see here let me see a bit yeah there you go there's a wider angle look of the now obviously they will plan to introduce this into production late in 2021 so later this year and they ca they're calling it zero layers in which the user no longer has to scroll through any variety of sub menus they only have to give commands as the most important application are always available in a situation and contextual way at the top of the driver's field of vision and i think this type of feature in a console or dashboard that you call it i think you know i'm looking forward that it trickles down to the budget vehicle to all types of vehicle in the future that you know obviously the downside of re relying on touch screens touch screen technology or voice activated relying more on software rather than hardware if you do encounter a problem you know you have to ship the entire screen <laughs> to the car dealership and you know it could be costly but you know with the advancement you have trade-offs here but you know it is what it is but it's very you know very interesting in my opinion anyway that obviously there's the infotainment system in the middle now obviously the problem of the issue here is you know the distraction aspect now it looks appealing that people would you know, especially if you're the driver, if I'm the driver, I'll be solely what keep on looking at the middle console or watching the screen or if the passenger is watch, watching on the screen, watching a film. I think in this one, they showed that the screen on the passenger side is totally blocked off, meaning uh, the screen has somewhat of a shade in a sense in terms of uh, if the passenger is watching the screen in front, they can see it clearly. But if you're on the side, on the passenger side, you cannot clearly see it. So you can still focus on the uh, on the road itself now obviously you know with new technologies distractions from the driver is always a main issue here and obviously to ensure the safety of the driver is important it's not just you know the wow factor of you know providing better products or services in the vehicle itself and you know the safety risk is always the primary focus here not just in airplanes but also in vehicles where people's life could be at stake here Anyway, the, the, the point that they're trying to need to focus, as mentioned, is the perfect ratio between the size and functionality for maximum user friendliness, obviously, is important as well as the, uh, the safety factor here. 